At the end of your life, what will be your legacy? What will you leave behind for future generations? For the world, join the world messenger, Isabella Lundberg, each week as she brings you a new distinguished guest from the business, sports, or entertainment world to share their success, their struggles, and their lessons. They will share their insights into current hot topics that affect everyone. Isabella facilitates an intimate, vulnerable environment to find the true value of humanity and real leadership. Are you ready for your legacy? The legacy that matters? Hello, hello, my beautiful friends. It's Isabella Lundbeck here, the World Messenger, and I'm inviting you for another absolutely epic interview here with special guest that is joining me from Atlanta. Um, he is super awesome human, and I'm just to have a chance for you to discover why Seth is here, Seth Michaels on the Legacy Leader Show. He is someone not only that is extremely successful right now in film industry on many levels, which he will share all the details shortly, but what I love about his background is someone who never stopped trying, who whatever he tried, either playing the soccer or uh, supporting the community or whatever might be the case, uh, you will be absolutely inspired and hopefully take us some great golden nuggets in his sharing. In addition, I had a chance to hear him share so much value in Clubhouse, and he is definitely the one that is walking the talk. And it's so important to see how you can be successful in the hardest industry to break into, and yet still be authentic, phenomenal human. So without further ado, Seth, welcome. How are you? Hi, Isabella. How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Um, I'll Great. Ask you again, would you like to be my publicist? Thanks for the introduction. Appreciate it. Absolutely. I would love that opportunity because it's just so much to brag about here. And it's such a great way. I mean, from someone who is doing Shakespeare's Nights in Italy, speaks how many languages, three languages or four, yeah. and living examples that Americans actually can do, learn the language and have a DNA for languages. You can't believe how many times I heard that, that they actually they are not wired to learn the languages. And I'm like, really? Seriously? He's also you're also supporting and helping phenomenal charities and finding ways to support other artists. But I love the attitude of everything you do. So without further ado, Seth, do you mind sharing a little bit about your background? How, where did you grow up? How did you even in Orange County dabble into all of these things and how, where are you at today? Uh, well, for, first of all, you want to tell your audience what happened or you want to keep that a secret? <laughs> I guess you can tell. <laughs> so, uh, Seth Michaels, uh, take two. Uh, <laughs> we doing the, okay, we could we could tell them. Yes, disclose, please. <laughs> and uh, Isabella forgot to record, so this is the second time. But we're recording now, correct? Yes, we are, Seth. I double checked. <laughs> I appreciate it. And this never happened, guys. In sixty some interviews, I already conducted, and I'm already like talking and we're into conversation and I'm realizing I did not push recording button. <laughs> wow. What don't a fiasco. Feel, don't feel bad. But now every time I do an interview, I'm like, is, is it recording? I'm going to ask. <laughs> but you taught me something today. I learned something today. Thank you. I learned something to hear today too. It's like, if you are not multi, if you multitask and not focus, laser focus, like typical I am, it's mm. easy to make a mistake. Listen, and I, I commit, I failed. But the best part, Seth is phenomenal human and he forgave me and we're just going to keep going. Well, I didn't forgive you. It'll cost you. When I, if I ever go to Croatia, you know, <laughs> uh, we'll make sure that uh, certain things happen when I show up and I'm, I'm greeted by the Croatian people with open arms, which, by the way, it's happened already um, because I've been to Croatia. Um, I was in Zagreb split. I was in Dubrovnik. I think I told you for eight, nine days. Uh, beautiful, beautiful country. I have many Croatian friends. I play soccer with a lot of them and, uh, and I can't wait to go back at some point. But back to your original question, um, I was born in Orange County, which is an hour south of LA. And I grew up there uh, playing soccer. I mean, uh, since I was a little kid, I had the fortune to move around different countries. My dad was an engineer of agriculture. So we lived in Mexico, we lived in other places then came back to California when I was 12 years old. And then I had a uh, scholarships all around the nation. I ended up in San Francisco and then San Diego State where I went to school and played soccer. 
Now, I was fortunate enough that one of my coaches, when I was playing club before I went to college, he had been a professional soccer player, and he was on the very famous 1976, I think it was 1974 uh, World Cup that took place in Peru, and he played for Peru, and he had been my coach. So him and I became really good friends. After my sophomore year of college, he recruited me to go down and play in Mexico City for Pumas Unam, which was a team that he played for, and now he was coaching. Um, but one of the things that really, really, it's always been a passion of mine is cinema. I love, yes. always love the fact going into a theater in the dark and just completely losing yourself and escaping reality and going into this world right in front of you. So I always known since I was a kid that I always wanted to be part of that. And in 1998, I, uh, I picked up all my stuff and I moved to Hollywood and uh, to become an actor. And I guess, as they say, the rest is history. Uh, but I never lost, I always knew that, you know, it's not a hard industry. It's not an easy industry to break to, break yes. into. And uh, so I made myself a, a, a promise that whether it took 10 years or 25 years or 40 years, I would stick with it no matter what. And fortunately for me, 23 years, I'm still here and doing what I love. And it just keeps getting better and better every year. That is brilliant journey, and thank you again for um, sharing uh, the, the, your beginnings and 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 some of the shifts and changes you had to go through, obviously, to get where you are today. Uh, which, um, of course, for everybody, it's never been always easy path, right? But no matter what, you did not give up. So, do you mind sharing a little bit with the audience? What did you have to go through? What did you have to sacrifice in order to be here? Before you answer that, I just want to also reflect what you mentioned with regards to Croatia. Uh, absolutely. Um, actually, we're working on some very interesting projects. And one of the secret reasons I also wanted to talk to you might be actually something amazing for you in, in the cards in the near future. So please, uh, you. if you don't mind, reflect on your early beginnings and struggles and challenges and how did you overcame them? I am so in Croatia. I'd love to do that. Uh, count me in. Um, you know, I, I, I got to LA, uh, I, I waited tables like everybody else. It's an easy job to do. Um, you know, you don't have to work many hours. You make good tips. I hated doing it. I got fired all the time because I talked back to rude customers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, so um, there was a point where I was homeless for two years in LA. I lived in my car. I, uh, I showered at my gym. I lived on, I stayed on people's couches, uh, walk-in closets, carpet, floor, it didn't matter. But it was, it was never losing sight of that bigger picture, which was, you know, uh, being a professional working actor. Um, and to me, it was just, it, it was never easy, but I never looked at it as failing. I looked at it as an experience. Everything I look at as an experience. And, you know, there's been some great experiences and some not so great, but nonetheless, I, I'm very fortunate to, to still be doing what I love, not getting burned out. Uh, you know, there's been so many people that helped me along the way and keep helping me. And because of that, I, I think you and I met through Clubhouse. And, and to me, it's a great platform where I can go and, and give advice and help people um, just to my experience and what has worked for me. You know, they always say there's many ways to skin a cat. I mean, yes, I it is for cats. I mean, why do we have to skin a cat? But, uh, you know, there's many ways to do something. So I, I think it, it worked for me, maybe can help somebody else. Uh, because I've been in those situations where you're just, you know, looking down and it's like, am I doing the right thing? Is this going to work out? Uh, am I talented enough? You know, these are, we're all human. And I think, you know, we have to understand that if, truly truly you believe and have faith and you're willing to do the work there's no reason why it shouldn't happen you know it doesn't become a question of of if but when and so i love that yeah so i always had that that vision of you know um of of making something and and and, and luckily you know i'm still here <laughs> 
Definitely. And, and seems like things are just getting better and better with so much in, in the queue or so many things that you are working. And, and that is also really amazing to see so many people complain. It's like everything is on hold. Uh, we're not working yet. You find yourself constantly busy and doing so many great projects. So, and I love also your attitude towards um, why not to share the knowledge and experiences and help other people, because that also shows reflection that I always strongly believe it's phenomenal traits of leadership and people that are um, trailblazers, but also at the same time have a great attitude uh, full around as a humans and uh, for the future of humanity in many ways. So do you mind just closing some exciting things that you're currently doing and what is in works for you? Um, well, one of the things that uh, I think we, uh, I might have mentioned earlier before we started the, the conversation I was in Texas, uh, I was supposed to be there for five weeks, but we ended up being there for uh, two months. Wow. Uh, we got caught in the worst storm in the history of Texas. We're literally yes. in there. And, uh, and so it was, it, was, it was a little rough. Luckily we were all you know, uh, not harmed by anything. Um, we try to help as much as I can. The, the people in the community where we're shooting in Alpine, Texas and Terralingua were wonderful, amazing Texans who, who came and helped out. And, um, but that's a very exciting movie. It's called Free Dead or Alive. Um, wow. I think, I, I don't know if I mentioned, I speak four languages. So I played a Mexican coyote who's trying to help a girl cross the border and who's also running from the cartel. And uh, so that to me, is an, it was an exciting, it was, it was an exciting uh, role to play. Uh, we talked about fear, you know, talked about, it really scared me when I read the script and because it scared me so much, I wanted to do it. And that's kind of the way I live my life. Whatever makes me nervous, whatever terrifies me, that's exactly what I want to do. Just because I don't want to be in comfort. I don't want to, you know, it makes me, makes me feel alive. It makes me feel like, I also understand that the bigger risk you take, the higher the reward. Uh, obviously it's not always like that, but when it does happen, it, there's nothing like it. There's no better feeling of really uh, succeeding or accomplishing something. That is so beautiful. And I can't agree more with you because also being multilingual and living on my own, you know, since former Yugoslavia collapsed and, and travel and lived in many different countries and all this pushing forward ideas and, and not giving up uh, brought me through so many amazing opportunities. And since like you're navigating so well, and I'm impressed that you're acting in a different language and able to play so many diverse uh, roles. So do you want to share a little bit about that? Um, yeah, I mean, I played everything from, uh, I, I played a Palestinian uh, movie called The Martyr. Um, I play an Israeli, I played Armenian uh, on a show called uh, American Soul, which is based on the story of Don Cornelius, who started a very famous dance show called um, Soul Train. Uh, every Saturday, it was a very famous TV show called Soul Train, where they had all these people dancing. And so they made a TV show, BET made a TV show called American Soul. So I played a, a character named Albert Gazazian. Um, I mean, wow. I, played, uh, I was uh, one of the most um, one of the most amazing roles and also experiences that I had as an actor was in a movie called Pele, Birth of a Le Legend, which was the life yes. of Pele in, in Brazil. We shot that in Brazil. I was down there for three months in, in Rio de Janeiro. So it's little things like that that, you know, I remember crying myself to sleep because I had no idea how I was going to pay rent or eat food or uh, or what was happening. And, and, and it's those experiences that I would look back to, I'm like, you know, it was all worth it, you know? And I still have those where, uh, where I, I pinch myself and like, is this really happening? Um, you know, cause I get to meet, you know, the average person gets to meet about a thousand people in their lifetime. When you're in my industry, you meet about a thousand people a year. So wow. I travel, I've been to 37 countries in the world. Um, I've met, so many people and every time I go somewhere and work with somebody and meet somebody I take a piece of them with me so every time I'm doing my work you see a lot of those people a lot of those places a lot of those cultures are up there on screen because I use every experience that I have I use it and and I'm so I'm very fortunate and very grateful that I get to do that um, even though it wasn't always easy and I and, and I, I remember this 
you know, and we talk about the formative years, right? When you, when you are born until the age of six or seven, I can't remember your subconscious mind, everything is programmed into who you become as an adult. So I had to reprogram myself and relearn how not to be a victim anymore and, and taking responsibility for myself. Um, you know, I, I always felt like I got dealt a bad hand of cards. And so I wanted to say, well, fuck you, you know, uh, <laughs> I'm not let that, you know, take me in a, in a way that I'm, I'm upset or I'm the victim and, oh, it shouldn't be like this. And so I never done drugs in my life, never had a drop, uh, drop of alcohol, never smoked cigarettes. Um, you know, I've been a vegan for over 21 years. I, I like to take care of my body as my temple. And, uh, and I learned that because I grew up with nothing. And now that I have everything, it doesn't matter. You always have you and your body. So if you take care of it, it will take care of you. And that to me is the most important thing. That is fantastic reflection um, and embody obviously as a vegan kudos for doing that. And obviously that also shows and supports how much you are supporting charities and, and, and different charities that are supporting helping animals. Um, so that, that is very uh, honorable, honorable from you uh, to do. But I wanted to also see like when you didn't have nothing, when you had these major, major pains, when nobody even in the beginning did not even support you, you had it just yourself, your own dream and desire. Do you mind sharing what was really the key within yourself? That's that confidence, the self-belief, that desire for more and pushing forward in those darkest moments, because people always see the success, right? But they don't see the process. How did you arrive there? Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a burning desire. I think it's just accomplishing something and it's almost like a game like a challenge i'm like okay i see where i'm at i see where i need to go how do i make it happen you know to me there's no such there's no such thing as no it's impossible right i, I can't remember i read this the thing but it's if you look at impossible it's i am possible right if you yes take it, uh and, and i it, sound, it might sound corny but it's so true it's just a matter of like, how do I make it happen? Because if you don't do it, someone else is, right? And, and I mentioned this before that only 2% of people follow their dreams, only 2%. So you have to figure out yourself whether you are part of the 98% or you're part of that 2%. But you know, there were so many moments where I, I as a human, I'm like, am I doing the right thing? Am I talented enough? Should I do yes. something else? Um, but I remember that I promised myself that I would never, I would never give up on the dream. And I have never based my success based on my accomplishments, but of what I had to sacrifice to get those uh, to achieve. And for the first seven and a half years, I never left Hollywood fearing that I might miss out on something. Mm. I miss out on funerals, weddings, birthdays, anniversaries, you name it, because I'm like, this is where I'm at. This is where I'm going to make it happen. And, uh, and the one thing that I remember, I'll never forget. And I used to tell myself when I was going through a bad patch, as we call it, or, or a, a bad experience, um, which now I understand there's no such thing as good or bad, it's just an experience and how you react to it is exactly what that experience will be. And what, what am I learning? How am I growing? Yes. But I, I used to think I'm like, well, I understand that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, right? I mean, how many times have you heard that? There's a light at the end of the tunnel. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. But I tell you when my life changed, you ready? Yes, please. The moment I realized that I was the light in the tunnel. Ah, uh, wow. My life Very profound. So you are the light in the tunnel. So whether you care to give yourself life and move forward and help those behind you or whatever that is, that is when my life changed. When I realized that I was the light at the tunnel and I was up to me to create that reality. Uh, I talk, I don't know if you heard me talk in Clubhouse, but I believe highly on life is energy and life Absolutely. is a right? And you're always the average of the five people closest to you. So if you want to raise that average, then you have to change those people around you. And that's all about energy and frequency. So when you change the way you think, what you say, how you feel, your visions, write it down, everything, you will see that your reality around you will start to change because now you have that choice. 
you have that option and you have that power to create it for yourself. It sounds easy, but it takes practice like anything else. Absolutely. So, it's so like we, you're acting and going to classes. It's like a, it's a mental gym. It's emotional gym. It's a physical gym. It's a spiritual gym. And also it is the gym for acting classes, uh, you know, to be the best you can. And, and I just love that you continuously progress and propel yourself forward. And which is the true essence of what, who we are, because everything is changing and, and we're changing with it. But conscious change yeah. and conscious transformation that you impose on yourself very few people sign themselves for that very often happens when it's absolutely being forced upon us not as a volunteer process so i'm curious how did you arrive at that and how did you continue to push yourself despite all those changes being very painful and not always the easiest ones to do i read a quote a long time ago and it said i love quotes by the way i love reading them and <laughs> i save them and it says, do not fear change. Fear being exactly in the same place a year from now. Mm. Want me to say that again? Please. <laughs> Very familiar with that. But yes, please, for audience that, that they really are struggling right now, as you know, so many people are and they're stuck and they don't see the hope and they are stuck in tunnel. They don't see the light. Please. Yes. Do not fear change. Fear being exactly in the same place a year from now. That is profound. That to me spoke very, very, it was very impactful. And we all fear, right? I mean, through courageous people are people who are actually afraid of doing it. That's courage. And, but I never been one to go and, and test the water with my toe and then see if I, I just jump right in and see what happens. That's always been, it's in my nature. I don't know how I got that. I don't know where it came from. Um, and even though my parents didn't give me much materialistic thing, they always gave me the freedom to do whatever I wanted to do. Yes. And to understand that I was responsible for my actions and there were consequences, whether good or bad. Um, and I never had a curfew, I was never grounded. And I think that because my parents were not strict, I knew exactly that, well, whatever happens, that's my own doing, that's my own choices. And uh, so I, me understanding that, you know, it kind of gave me a little bit of, uh, of, of the confidence to, to just try it and go and see what happens and not fearing, um, not fearing, you know, the result, because truly what we have right now is now, that's it. The past is gone. The future is not here yet. What we have is right now in this moment. And for me to dwell in the past, that's where the passion, depression comes. You know, yes. so if people get depressed, stop, let go of the past, it's gone. And then they think about the future. So anxiety comes from the future. So it's like you go from like the past to the future and this anxiety and depression. You have to live in the moment now and start changing now the way you think, the way you feel. Start writing down every morning, wake up and write five things you're grateful for. You know, my health. I'm grateful for my health. I'm grateful that I have food in my plate. I'm grateful that I have friends. I'm grateful that I have family. I am grateful that I am alive. And the next morning you write other five things. And every morning you write five things you're grateful for. And this gratitude is an energy where that gratitude will bring you more amazing things into your life. Um, and that's worked for me. I know it's worked for many of my friends who at some point I'm like, okay, stop. This is what we got to do. Stop playing the victim. Stop complaining. We got to do this. And their lives have changed because they understood that they are in control of the way their reality. Yes, opportunity to change the script and play the different role and, and consciously decide what that role will be, right? Interesting that when you were talking about that, Seth, there's um, from my analysis, even before COVID and definitely now during the COVID, top three fears that people have. Number three is fear of failing. But number two is fear of success. So, you know, it's like, okay, how can you succeed if you don't fail enough, right? It's like, so it's interconnected. But the number one is the one that surprised people. But when they really, when sinks in, they realize actually makes so much sense. Feel of fear of rejection. So, so many people are not showing up with their own capacity of making major impact, whatever their desire to do, but because they're so paralyzed to ask. They're so paralyzed to show up. They're so paralyzed to be vulnerable. And that is what I find now 
three key ingredients for success. Mm. And you're demonstrating that and through everything you share to say and how you live your life. And you're sh showing, and this is why I want you for viewers and listeners to really understand from a leadership standpoint, it's walking the talk, being congruent, being yourself 24 seven, not when you're just on the big screen, not when you're meeting with the big partners, not when you wanted to impress someone, but just simply being yourself at any given time and being comfortable with that, being comfortable in your own skin as you are, right? And that is definitely taking a lot of practice and loving yourself, self-love and, and understanding you have something beautiful to offer. Speaking of which, I'm just curious how you make decision, which roles to accept. I mean, you already mentioned a little bit about the ones that scares you the most, right? Mm -hmm. But but what 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 are you excited about in future roles and things you did not have a maybe chance to play yet? Um, I mean, I, I have a team. I have a great team here in Atlanta, uh, People Store, which is the biggest agency in the Southeast. Um, you know, so they create opportunities for me as well, but then I get to choose those opportunities. I think for me, you know, it's looking at the story, you know, uh, the character, what is this character going through? How's he helping the story move forward? Uh, what is his message to the world? And that also relates to us as human beings, right? Uh, because we are responsible and we're a work of art. So yes. make, it, make it count, right? make it count. And that's the one thing that I, that I look at in, in the stories as well. Am I making a difference in this? Is this going to make a difference? Because as you know, the power of visual, the power of film, of cinema, is, it's amazing. It, I mean, it's, and I think that's why so many people want to be a part of it, you know, and I think, you know, until they realize that <laughs> what it takes to, to you know, to yes. their industry, they're like, oh man, screw this. But to me, I think is mostly if it excites me, if it scares me, if uh, if it means something, if it speaks to me, uh, and what the overall picture of this character within the story is, that's what I look at. Um, you know, now, you know, when I was younger, I'm like, I just want to work. I'm an actor. I just want to work. I want to work. And you know, of course, I did something like, oh well, I don't know if I would do that now, but you know, I just wanted to work as an actor. And I think that goes for any actor. Actors just want to work. But I think now for me, it's just how does that make me feel, uh, you know, and uh, how does, how, do, how would I help tell the story? And, you know, uh, do, can I make, can I give it justice? Or is it the right fit or, or do I really care about it? Right. I'm yeah. sure you had a plenty of roles that you had to, to, to turn down because they were not congruent with who you are or mm -hmm. various reasons and criteria. And I'm just curious, what criteria do you operate under? Because obviously not only as an actor, but as a producer and, 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 and when selecting the team, what, what is important based on your experience specifically right now, when people are desperate and they will do a lot of crazy stuff because of desperation to really pay attention for? Um, there was a, I love talking about quotes. It's like, don't drink for, don't drink from every cup that's been given to you. That's how you get poison, right? I don't know if you ever heard of that. Um, yes. Opportunity. You know, I think if our intuition is so strong and our intuition never fails us. So I'd say to somebody, you know, don't do things out of desperation. Don't do things out of money or something exterior to who you truly are. Keep your morals, keep your dignity um, and do something out of love. I think so many of us, especially now you mentioned with COVID, there's so much fear right now. And I think yes. people are making a lot of choices based on fear instead of love. And uh, it's a big issue that I see with many of my friends, even family members, you know, where I'm like, they're making choices based out of fear. Whatever you believe in, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. It's just make them out of love. And that fear of failure that you spoke about, the fear of success and the fear of rejection. I mean, I can't tell you the amount of times I see people sabotage. Yes. Themselves, you know, yes. I mean, I told you about Shakespeare, right? Going to Italy. I mean, I wanted to sabotage it. I knew it was a great opportunity, but I want, there was a part of me that was trying to sabotage it. And these little voices and it was like, and at some point you have to like get out. You're not serving me right now and understanding and, and, and acknowledging that and, and 
taking a deep breath and really meditating on it and, and say, is this the right thing? And people, I guarantee you that if people really do that, they'll know the answer. Now, yes. whether you want to be in denial and not follow it, that's a whole different, <laughs> a whole different <laughs> segment that you would get, get into. But I think for me, it's exactly that is, does it really speak to me? Is it the right thing to do? Am I doing it for the right reasons? That is brilliant. And I'm so glad you pointed that out because what I'm noticing, people like yourself, they work on themselves early on and never stop working on themselves. And meaning on all levels, right? Like you chose veganism, you chose different lifestyle, you chose to go through major pains and breakthroughs till you got where you at. But you're not just stopping there. You're also going above and going to the next level and keep growing and expanding. They are easier in navigating. They have a much easier time, sorry, navigating current events. The ones that are finding that they did not work as hard on themselves and work on the wrong things, they're having tremendous challenge. And I'm seeing this with even with executives on top firms and, and mm. companies that are trying to make a decision, they're paralyzed, as you mentioned earlier. And as a result, they're making a really poor judgment and who they're associated. And even what you mentioned, free bought people and, and, and being of surrounded people that share similar values. And I see also values changed as much to the point that I was like, what are you guys doing? I can't even recognize anymore the either environment or, or, or the person. So what I really wanted to highlight here is this is reflection when somebody does work on themselves and what is possible. So I'm curious, what is next coming for you? What are you pushing and challenging yourself on personal level? And what are you seeing on your bucket list? You mentioned you traveled to 37 countries. You played so many highly diverse roles. You're leveraging your languages. You're leveraging experiencing for these amazing trips. And I'm curious, where, where are you headed? What, what is in the works um, in years to come? Um, <laughs> so right now, we're in the process of we have 10 feature films that we're producing. Um, only I've, 10? Wow. <laughs> only 10 this year so far. I know. I was like, I, wow, Seth. <laughs> yeah, only 10 uh, that are fully funded, ready to produce. We have two documentaries that I'm in, 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 in post right now. I'm just editing and finishing the color and the sound. I have... Um, I have a TV series based on a book that I, I, I got the options to last year called Gladius. Gladius is a book uh, written by Robert Hernando out of Barcelona. Imagine, imagine Gladiator meets Fight Club in modern times. Wow. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an author who self-published, became one of the top 17 bestsellers in Spain and one of the top 180 bestsellers in, all, in the whole world. So Brilliant. I got the option. So right now I'm with my, one of my writers, we're finishing the Bible and the pilot. It's already done projections and all of that. And I've been in talks with Netflix now for three months. So that to me is the most exciting project that I have. I, I can't talk too much about it, but um, the book, the documentaries, the feature films, uh, I mean, it's just, you know, it's always in this development and, and, and executing and, and uh, again, so grateful and, and so fortunate to, to, uh, to have things work out. And if you don't mind, obviously, knowing organizational structure and going to organ knowing the business and knowing the dynamics of the film industry that I'm scratching more and more surface with, it's not easy to make all this happen and make it amazing projects and, and set up everything as you have in right now. Obviously, requires phenomenal team. Do you mind sharing how, how important it is your leadership style and collaboration and setting the tone and expectation in your success or any other ingredient that we don't know about? Um, I think a woman behind you or next to you is the most important thing. And that's my wife who I've been married for almost 13 years. She's an amazing producer and, uh, and she's a Virgo and yes. <laughs> very and she, intuitive. Yes. She's, I'm a Pisces, right? So I'm up here dreaming. She's down here doing, and she brings me down and we have to do, but I think a team that you can trust that you can rely that, you know, that it's going to, things are going to get done. Um, yes. You know, they always said that, oh, behind every great man, there's a great woman. I disagree with that. I mean, I, I was raised by a single mother and I have sisters. I think next to a, 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 a man, there's a greater woman. You know, it's never behind, never in front. I think we're all equal 
I love that. That is know? such a beautiful distinction. Uh, kudos. And, kudos. Uh, so I understood that I'm a feminist, believe me. I, I'm all, we, we, we hire a lot of women in our crew and our, our cast. I mean, uh, the you know, stories, but you know, you, we try to also minorities, me, you know, I consider myself Latino, giving opportunities to, to the minorities and, and, and the women. Uh, it's a big thing for me. Uh, hence why I, you know, one of my favorite charities is Harvest, who helps single mothers have nowhere else to go with their children. Uh, it's out of Venice, California. Um, but I think that for, for, for creating, I'm also very calm, you know, I never lose my shit. I, 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 I respect people. I treat people with dignity. I people, I treat people like, like, uh, I don't, I wouldn't treat a homeless man any different than a man running a country. You know, there's no, uh, quite the contrary. I probably treat the homeless man better than I would somebody running a country. But uh, <laughs> I think, you know, in that sense, we're all, we're all equal and we have something special to give and, and we're all very, you know, we're all going through something. And, and, you know, I put myself in other people's shoes and, uh, and I never given because of I have a lot. I always give in because I know what it's like not to have anything. But mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, I have my strengths and there's things that I concentrate on. And there's things that my wife is my producing partner. She has and uh, we work really well together. And then then we surround ourselves with people with the same mentality and the same work ethic. You know, it's uh, we are a brand. So we have to protect and keep that brand and as a reputation, especially in the industry as big as it is, is very close. And yes. so soon as something happens, everybody finds out. So you have to protect that brand and surrounding yourself with people that you can trust that people that you know will go to war with you, you mm -hmm. know, and have your back and protect you. And that's the way I look at it. And I think that's the success is really finding a partner that has the same vision and the same picture, uh, you know, or where you need to go and what needs to be done to get there. Because there's nothing greater than power and numbers that is so true and and having the right team and i'm glad you're sharing that because when you have that trusted partnership all the magic happens and that is something that i'm constantly talking and walking and trying to explain to people it's like it's no shortcuts but you but it also takes the time it takes the time to to find the right crew and team but when you do it's like it's all-star projects and all-star outcomes you, you get some amazing things that you get nominated for you get awards for but it, that, that really shows Shows the level of standards that you're keeping uh and and that is so beautiful and i'm so glad you mentioned also how much you are not only collaborative working with your life partner and your business partner which is also very hard for many people to do but also how much you are appreciating diversity and and, and giving opportunities to minorities um so uh, kudos again for doing that that is that is just so enlightening specifically in hollywood and as we've seen as they say old mold or old uh concept of hollywood are co collapsing right now and will never be the same i'm curious actually what is your take what what changes do you see and 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 when you moved yourself to atlanta you obviously connected still very much so with hollywood itself but uh do you mind sharing where do you see industry going from your perspective um, I see now, I mean, you know, Hollywood is Hollywood. I'm, I don't think it'll never go anywhere, but you know, the infrastructure, I mean, I think it started with the Me Too movement, you know, and sort of ousting these assholes, you know, who took advantage of the, the power, especially with the most vulnerable, um, you know, it's upsetting and, you know, things that we hear about now, you know, people already knew within the industry who was doing what, it was never a secret, you know, but again, running on fear the fear of being blackballed, right? The fear of, of uh, being blacklisted, I guess the, that's the way you can call it, blacklisted. Yes. Uh, you know, the fear of not working again, you know, a lot of people kept their mouth shut. And now it got to a point where at some point it has to fail, it has to open up. You know, now, you know, creating our own projects, doing our own thing and letting people know, I'm like, you have the ability to do that as well. And I tell actors right now, when I talk to young actors, and they said, what advice can you give me? I'm like, when I started in 1998, we were still doing film and film, like actual film, 35 millimeter, 16, super 16, super eight. You know how expensive that was? It was so expensive to buy the film, develop. I mean, it was to, to I mean, it was expensive. Now you can pick up a phone. Yes. And do your own stuff. Very so true. So, 
there's so much freedom now to do your own thing. Don't wait for somebody to come and give you the opportunity. Create that opportunity for yourself. There's a way that you can, I mean, look at YouTube, look at TikTok, look at, you know, Amazon. I mean, there's so many platforms where now you can sell your own work. You don't have to wait for somebody to do that for you. I mean, so there is no excuse, whether it's my industry or anything you want to do, not to do what you want to do. The only thing that's stopping you is you, period. I don't want to hear no excuses, no victim. And I don't want to hear it. It's you who's stopping you. And how you and I and I hear it. And when I talk to people, I hear in their voices, I hear what they say, and I stop them like, well, you just said this, this, and that. They're like, yeah, well, <laughs> that's exactly what's stopping you. Well, I believe this. What do you think? I'm like, I agree. What you agree with what I said? I'm like, well, if that's what you believe, there's nothing that I can say or do to change what you believe. So the minute you change what you believe, that's the minute that I'm gonna believe what you believe. So does that make sense? Absolutely. That is that is fantastic. So I'm glad that we are threading a lot, not only um, obviously to get into industry, but also what it takes to be the right for the industry or any other success or any venture, because it's all about a mindset and attitude and aptitude. And that is definitely um, what is actually lacking, unfortunately, a lot. So I'm glad that you shed the light on that. But I also wanted to ask if you don't mind before we close, um, I'm curious, who did you, when you, you acted with so many great actors and actresses, wh which film was one of the most breaking point for you, one most transformational for you? And who did you like working so far the most with and who are you hoping to work in the future? Oh, wow. That's, uh, I mean, it's just like life itself. I, you know, everything is an experience and every single human being has something special about themselves, something to give and you learn and you grow from those people. Um, and I had the opportunity to work with so many wonderful actors and wonderful human beings. And I remember it was an interview, I think it was Johnny Carson with, with um, God, who was it? Uh, very famous, I can't think of his name right now, like completely, not Paul. Um, Wish I can no. be helpful, <laughs> sorry. Uh, he was married to John Woodward. Uh, hold on. I'm sorry. This is going to drive me nuts. Uh, do you remember <laughs> The Color of Money? I, I heard of it, but I don't think I watched. Paul Newman. Paul Newman. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, my God. Of course. Of course. Yes. And, and so I think it was Johnny Carson interview. And he says, um, Mr. Newman, who's your favorite actor? And who's the favorite actor you work with? And he says, you wouldn't know any of them because they were not famous people. There were actors that he worked with in theater, actors that he worked at Shakespeare and uh, Summerstock. I mean, there were so many, you know what I mean? And, I, and I'm like, wow. So when you ask me that, I can't really tell you. Uh, I mean, you know, I grew up in a movie called Full Metal Jacket, right? Uh, uh -huh. I don't know if you're familiar with Full, Full Metal Jacket, but- No, unfortunately uh, not. <laughs> yeah, so Full Metal Jacket's an amazing war movie and it's the amount of characters, but there was one character I will never forget and it was a guy who was not in shape. Nobody liked him in the in the military, and and uh, and he this act. I mean, at the time I was so young when I saw it that I didn't really think it was a movie. I thought it was a real person, and this guy died. And fast forward to me shooting this movie about Pele, right? The greatest soccer player ever lived, and I'm there, and I and I'm working with Pele, and and I played soccer, and then I have a scene. I have a few scenes with Vincent D'Onofrio, who happened to be that guy in full metal jacket that I never forgot as a kid. Wow. You know? And then, because he doesn't know anything about soccer or football, he's coming to me for advice. So I have to sit with him every day for like two hours to talk about soccer and because he's our coach. So when he wants to coach, he wants to make sure that he knows what he's talking about. So I'm sitting with this guy and I, and I have pictures of him and I, and I'm drawing stuff on the board, you know, the chalkboard. And we're talking about soccer and plays and formations and the whole time going, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> How lucky you got to be, but isn't it amazing? We can learn from each other. And I love that. Yeah, it was just amazing. And then about four years ago, another great actor who was in that movie with them was a, an actor named Matthew Modine. Uh, who who is a photographer and that you have to see full, I'm sure you probably have seen it, you don't remember the name. Uh, you know Stanley Kubrick? 
Yes. Director, you better say your audience is going to kill you if you don't say it. <laughs> full metal jacket. And uh, so Matthew Modine was in that movie. So next thing you know, I'm working with Matthew Modine two years later in okay. this in this project that he's directing me in. And we're having, we're going out to dinner and we're, and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, what is going on? So those are the moments when you realize like, maybe I'm doing something right. Maybe something's working out here, you know? Um, last year, towards the end of last year, I'm working with The Rock and Ryan Reynolds and Gal Gadot. I mean, you know, and you're yes, like- Yes, that was big. Oh my God, that is huge. You know, and then um, I was doing, um, when I was a kid, I was, well, not, not a kid, I was in my teenagers. There was a movie called The Mummy that came out with The Rock right? Yes, and, yes. Uh, and, and Brendan Fraser. But there was the, I can't remember the name of her character. Uh, it was a wonderful actress from Venezuela named Patricia Velasquez, right? And, uh, and I'm like, oh my God, I love this woman. She's amazing, amazing actress, an amazing human being. She's a great humanitarian, works with a lot of underprivileged kids out of Venezuela and Colombia and feeds, feeds like 20,000 people a day through her organization and nonprofit. And next thing you know, I'm doing this movie in Texas and she is playing, she's playing. Wow. Right. That is amazing. I love when things like that happen in life, people that we look up to and all of a sudden we get to share the room or share the stage or, or be in the same, whatever movie or, or event. That is, that is amazing. Yeah. And I remember just having conversations with her and being with her and talking about, uh, just acting and the, and the craft. And, and, and I remember to my acting part, the, the lead, me and this girl are the leads and she plays the mother of, of this character. And she was telling me that the next day, like, oh, what are you doing? Like, and they're like, oh, I have these scenes with Seth. I'm like, oh, I wouldn't worry about Seth. You know, he, he's, he's great. So when, <laughs> when, when she tell, I'm like, what? She said that about me? Like, this just, you know, just makes you like, what the, <laughs> it's just so surreal. Um, you know, so those to me are moments where, uh, where I can go back and say, wow, you know, there were great experiences. Thank you for sharing that. And, and again, as you said, you're spot on. We can learn from everybody, but it's also the specific moments, specific roles, where we are on personal level and professionally that really makes huge impact and then just keeps building and building. And to be honest, very often we don't see how far we became and how far along we are. And we don't necessarily stop and reflect and celebrate those successes, right? Because that's not necessarily what we're thought to do and how important it is to also say, oh my God, it's not because of reputation and money and projects, but because of also effort that I put through that I became who am I today. Yeah. So but I wanted just to highlight that is not an accident set and all the hard work definitely pays off for sure. So with that in mind, do you mind just to letting us, what is, uh, what would you like for your legacy to be? What would you like to be remembered for? Because you are doing so much beyond the screen, beyond entertainment industry. And one thing I just want to highlight for everybody that is listening and watching, you are doubled into two major arenas that are actually connecting the world together. Usually there are sports and obviously the movies. Mm -hmm. So with that in mind, I'm just curious, uh, what, what, what would that be next thing to tackle or conquer or achieve that would really satisfy and say, I really loved fulfilled life, what that would be? Um, I think the greatest power that we have as human beings, or, and Jim Carrey said it best, the best currency we have is how we make others feel. Uh -huh. At the end of the day, it's how we make, people will never forget well, people will never remember what you wore, what you had, where blah, blah, blah. They'll remember how you made them feel. Yes. And that to us is the best currency we have. So I take very high treat others. You know, I am, I am sarcastic and I have a dark sense of humor. <laughs> and sometimes I upset people, but I'm just, you know, I'm just being, you know, humorous. But being you, but being also you and, and who gets yeah. it, gets it, right? You're not for everyone, but that no. doesn't mean it's a bad and it's wrong and you need to filter yeah. and, and try to squeeze into something you're not. Yeah. So I try to find the humor and everything because, you know, life is short. I mean, why be so yes. sick? Um, but I think, you know, what I would like to be remembered is just somebody who, who never gave up and no matter the circumstances, you know, just kept going and going. And some people call it persistence. I just like to say I'm really stubborn. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yes. 
So definitely you are, you are stubborn, but also I can see a lot of endurance and you're committed. You're very committed to also whatever that is yeah. and, and commitment to excellence, commitment to um, this achieve or make things happen. So in closing, what would be the one or two golden nuggets that you want to leave the audience with that you will set them at least in the right path or right mindset? Because um, I love your quotes, I love the stories, I love all the breakthroughs and opportunities for them to really see that all of those things that they experience is part of the journey, but something that they can latch on, what that would be. I'm, I'm actually looking for one because I knew that would come up and I'm like, I wanted to leave <laughs> She's There's tricking so me. She's putting me on the hot seat now. <laughs> no, no, no. We can be here another hour, me reading these amazing <laughs> quotes, right? Uh, this, this, I don't know if you can see this, but can you read that? Oh my God. Uh, yes, 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 yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love that one, but I'm going to read one that I read many years ago and it's still st stuck with me. Um, and you know, we talk about change, right? And people talk about change and like how they're afraid of change. And, uh, but this is a great one. Technique and ability alone do not get you to the top of the mountain. It is the willpower that is the most important. This willpower you cannot buy with money or be given by others. It rises from your heart. Mm, that is rich. And I believe you also mentioned the one from Legendary Chalice. Do you mind sharing yes. that one? Because I did not hear that one before. And that one really touched me because uh, I even asked him to share with me in writing because I wanted to use as a part of this podcast and uh, the show of the Legendary Chalice Pablo Casellas. Yes. So the legendary shellist Pablo Casals was asked why he kept practicing at the age of 90. And his response was, because I think I'm making progress. Wow, guys, it doesn't get better than this. So you have a three amazing golden nuggets to really take on. And but I got my favorite quote. I'm not please, favorite. please, please, please. <laughs> I'll leave you with this. Okay, okay. It is called, it is called The Man in the Arena. And it was written by Theodore Roosevelt. You haven't heard this one, have you? But, okay, I, I know the one was around, okay. I know that like everything game is going on regardless we're ready or not. Is that the one no. that we need to be ready for? Okay, then I don't, sorry. This is so beautiful. It's amazing, it's my favorite one. Okay. Ready? It's yes. called The Men in the Arena. It is not the critic who counts, not the man who points out how the strong man stumbles or where the doer of deeds could have done them better. The credit belongs to the man who's actually in the arena, whose face is marred by dust and sweat and blood, who strives valiantly, who errs, who comes short again and again, because there is no effort without error and shortcoming, but who does actually strive to do the deeds who knows great enthusiasms, the great devotions, who spends himself in a worthy cause, who at the best knows in the end the triumph of high achievement, and who at the worst, if he fails, at least fails while daring greatly, so that his place shall never be with those cold and timid souls who neither know victory nor defeat. Wow, that is amazing. You have to share that one as well so that I, I can that reference, you. post the link. But I love it, Seth. And I love the quotes and I use them. And, and you're right. It's just that they mean different things in different stages. But mm. also those are the most profound ones that are mostly transformative and, and bring up tremendous results. So guys, you now you have it. Now you have a path forward. Now you have something to uh, look up to and look forward to it. And I cannot say how grateful I am for this opportunity, Seth, and it's to be continued. Well, I'm grateful to you for having me on. And hopefully, you know, if people who watch your show and, and who are listening, you know, and there's maybe a moment in their life that you know, we're, cause we all been there. Hopefully this helps and, uh, and be more than, and I'll be more than happy. Reach out to me. You can reach me through Twitter or, or, or Instagram and send me a message and, you know, any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them if I have the time. I will definitely post, post those links. And also guys for clubhouse, 
he is being quite a bit of active at, uh, when, when he can in evening hours, I'll catch a couple of times yeah. and you usually go to which clubs, if you don't mind, so that they can find you. Of course, they can find you by your name, but yeah. usually uh, clubs that you will recommend where, where you share a lot of great uh, wisdom, not only from the entertainment space, but also from how to be phenomenal human and continue uh, serving and supporting others where they can find you. Um, I think Clubhouse, I mean, it's usually um, I go to anything with the industry, um, Hollywood insiders, uh, actors on acting. Um, I also do one on, on plant-based, you know, uh, veganism. I do yes. that. Um, there's one of Letting Go, with, which my friend, a great friend of mine who's a big casting director out of LA, Cherise Glenn, has, holds a, a, a platform on, on Letting Go. Uh, I think it's Letting Go of that shit, maybe, you know, because we hold <laughs> So yes, we need to let, let go a lot of shit for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, and uh, so, uh, you know, th those things, uh, you know, those are some of the rooms that I can remember. That's fantastic. Okay, guys, now you have it. So now you're going to have a chance to find him outside of Clubhouse and chance to find him inside of Clubhouse and hear him speak. And this is again yet to be continued. Thank you, Seth. Wish you a phenomenal rest of the day and great shooting in Atlanta. We Thank cannot you, wait for the dolls, those great new projects coming to light. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll speak soon. Thank you for listening to Legacy Leader Show. If you enjoyed the content and had a positive experience, then please leave us a positive rating. In addition, leave us positive review whenever you are listening on whatever platform there might be. Make sure your friends and family also know about the benefit and value that we provide and what we have to offer. Cheers.